thank you very much for participating in the, in the conference. We're very excited that you are attending. So one, I thank you. One of the things we really want you to explore, want you to talk about now a little bit as a, as a teaser, is the idea that hyper-local journalism, hyper-local news, is a sustainable business. From everything that we've seen, it is not. It takes more people and more expense to put all of this stuff out there. There is traffic to the site, but advertisers, who seem to be the ones that are going to have to support all this, don't seem that enthusiastic. What is your model showing? How are the numbers, according to what you've seen, going to make hyperlocal journalism a sustainable business for us? At the City University of New York, where we are, where I teach journalism, we did a big project in New Business Models for News. It's ongoing. And uh, we looked at the kind of worst case analysis. What happens if a newspaper dies? Not that we're trying to kill it, we don't want to kill it, but if it's gone, what replaces it? And it became obvious to us that it's not a dumb old company replaced by a smart new company. It's an ecosystem. Many different players, many different uh, motives and means and business models. So we did research on those. We talked to uh, more than 100 hyperlocal bloggers. And we found some hyperlocal bloggers who were bringing in $200,000 a year. Now, not all of them, but it shows it's possible. And to be frank, these are hyperlocal bloggers who are journalists who aren't very good at sales or at advertising or at business. Even so, they can bring in what is clearly a sustainable revenue model. And we're seeing this ecosystem start to emerge now. As journalists lose their jobs, they're going out and trying to start these, these sites as others uh, are coming to journalism to start them. Uh, we believe that there's a sustainable model there as a building block. It can be far better, it needs to be far better. And the way it gets better is, I think, in a few key things. One is to, just as newspapers have to improve their sales and what they're selling and how they're selling it, so do we have to help these bloggers improve their service to local merchants. The second thing we have to do is create networks. Uh, a blog in one town needs to be able to sell ads in five towns around. There's going to be metro-wide revenue that can come to a quality network of blogs. Somebody has to put that together. Uh, we were helped in our thinking on the models by Mark Potts, who started Growthspur, and in essence, that's what he's starting at Growthspur, is a network company. There's others who are doing different models, like, like um, Merrill Brown and Prism, uh, plus Patch, plus AOL. There's a lot of people coming into local because they believe it. Uh, if you can pull in, in a town of 50,000 people, $300,000, $350,000 revenue, and it's credible because the crappy uh, weekly paper that I have in my town is pulling in what? Probably a million. And uh, I think a blog could do a better job. Not always the case, but in my town it is the case. So these, these blogs appear, they're advertising supported, they're not supported by subscription revenue which all the newspaper websites now appear to be wanting to do to charge I, I think that's for, bull. for access. I think that's absolute bull. They're, they're following Pied Pipers over the cliff. Subscription revenue is not going to do it. There's a high cost of subscription acquisition. The real issue, we're talking so much about one revenue line. We had it in the past, we should have it in the future. It costs a lot, we should do it. This is talk of entitlement and emotions, not economics. I think it's bull. Uh, if you want to try it, I'm not against pay. I'm all for it if you can do it, but I just argue you're going to be better off with advertising. In our modeling, we also looked at a new news organization. There will still be a metro-wide news organization doing beat reporting, investigative reporting, and also working collaboratively with this network. But it's much smaller. It's much smaller than it was, and that's the problem we really have. Look at Washington. Uh, Jim Brady and company are starting Politico Local, and as someone said at a conference I was at recently, it's a lot easier to build that from the ground up than it is to take the Washington Post and make it into Politico Local. That's the problem we have here. We have companies that have 1,000, 1,500 employees that are going to be working in a world where it's probably a hundred person company. And the pain and struggle, uh, both economically and culturally, of going from 1,500 to 100 is probably impossible for them. And that's really the issue. They're trying to maintain their old cost structure, and that's the problem we don't talk about here. You come out of the newspaper industry to an extent. You were with Advanced Newspapers. Well, I was with New York Daily News. I was with the Chicago Tribune, Chicago Today, San Francisco Examiner. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an inky guy. So, so you you know ink and paper. You know that smell when you walk into an old newspaper building. Um, what what does a newspaper do? I mean, what you're doing is is sounds like a great model, and we've seen it work time and again on the internet in terms of build, building a content related site. But you have newspapers that are in the mode of protecting their business. How do they, what would be your best advice? If you were doing this, what would you do? Protection is no strategy for the future, especially now. All the rules have changed. The utter economics of media have changed permanently, profoundly. You just cannot try to protect the old. If you do, you just milk on the cow until it, until it keels over. You have to have the courage to utterly redo it. I consulted for the new houses, my old employers in Ann Arbor, where the Ann Arbor News is no longer. They created a new community-based, uh, blog-based site 
uh, much lower cost structure that is getting higher engagement than before uh, that's doing very well. Somebody's got to protect the paper. Why? Because the paper is a business that brings in 10, 20, 30, 40 It also million brings dollars. in huge amounts of cost. Well, the issue here shouldn't be the size of the revenue. The issue sh here should be the profitability. If you're bringing in $10 million and you're losing money, why protect that? Forget the, forget the internet for a moment. You've got a newspaper that needs to be protected. So No, I, do I don't buy that. Okay. Why do I have to protect the old industrial model? Okay, so do you, I don't okay. have to. No. So then you're in that position. You're the publisher of the paper. Do you sell it? Do you fold it? What do you do? You you have the courage to remake it, and it's going to cost you a lot of money in shutdown costs, one way or the other. Frankly, there are companies that have been in bankruptcy, Tribune Company, Minneapolis, that could have used bankruptcy as an opportunity to do brave and difficult things. They could have gotten rid of contracts, gotten rid of printing, gotten rid of distribution, changed the structure of the company radically. The new houses did that in Ann Arbor. They shut down the paper, they went through the shutdown costs, they created a new company and a new product. And that's what I think is necessary. There is still a benefit to having that brand and that relationship and that knowledge of the market and that relationship with the advertisers that carries over. But Ann Arbor didn't shut down the paper. They shut down the paper. They shut down the company. They still print a product, a new product, two days a week, print it elsewhere because there's still a legacy time when you're going to be able to get circular uh, FSI money. So there, are, there is a print product. Yeah, I'm not future. against print. I'm not against paying. I'm not against any of that. I'm saying that the, the, the discussion is all wrong. The discussion is about trying to preserve bits of old models. We have to look at what's right for an entirely new world. We have to look at the total P&L, not just trying to say, well, we deserve to get paid like we used to. That is infantile. One last question for you. Why are you so passionate about this? Because I believe in journalism. Because I care about journalism. I teach journalism. I want journalism to not just survive, but to prosper and grow in a new world, and I believe it can. You know, I got a, I got a gray beard. I've got a second childhood from the internet. It gave me a new view of life and a new view of what's possible. And I teach entrepreneurial journalism here at CUNY, and I have students ready to go out and start businesses. Our, our enrollment here is up. They're not all going to get jobs in legacy places. They're going to become the entrepreneurs who create the future of journalism, and that's why I'm here, and that's what I'm excited about. The problem is, and I think it's not just newspapers, we're, we're judging this by the old metric of saying huge revenue. Mm -hmm. Well, huge revenue with no profit is, is bull. It's not going to work. And so you've got to rethink what the business is. In our models, and, and, and their models, you know, all models are bull, uh, but in our models, we saw profit margins of 20, 25%. Um, it's a much smaller company. Now, in the total of our model, uh, we saw. Um, I think $47 million revenue is what we projected. Uh, now, that's about 15% of what New England media makes today in revenue, which is to say it's a credible amount, 10 to 15% of, of print revenue coming to digital. So for that, what did we get? Well, we got more than 100 companies that are operating, many of them owner-operated, journalists operating them. We got, uh, I think the number was um, 270 journalists, full-time equivalents, lower paid, but journalists, versus what? That newsroom probably has about 300 now. So for a lower amount of revenue, you could support an equivalent number of journalists, more tied to the community, more answerable to the community, doing far less commodity bull and production work, producing more journalism that, has, that matters um, at a higher profit margin. What's not to love? Well, what's not to love is how you get from here to there. And the problem is if you want to get from here to there, you've got shutdown costs. One way or the other, you've got shutdown costs. You don't have an ITU anymore. And so you're not going to have drivers anymore. You're not going to have pressmen anymore. And that's tragic for all of them. But somehow we've got to, we've got to see that day. The problem is we just keep on trying to put blinders on and imagine that day is not there. Well, that's, that's no strategy. That's what the entire industry is doing. And so you're not going to incrementally try to cut to that future. You're going to cut your product so much that it's crap. And I've seen a lot of papers around this country that are now crap because they got cut down rather than built up. You know what the problem is? You're not providing e easy answers. No, that's it's not it. an easy answer. It's, it's, it's very hard on both ends. So I think you've got to reinvent what it is. Yeah, that's the. That's and can you do that outside of bankruptcy? I'm not fully sure. Yeah. And so that's a really hard decision.